Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Print Marketing Masterclass with Tom Britton. I'm William Rader, the founder of Well Attended, and we're really happy to be with Tom Britton today over on his YouTube channel. So if you're watching this right now, you're over on Tom's channel. And we have a bit of a delay. If you could turn that um, down on your end, that would be ideal. Okay, great. So this is part one of our three-part series on print marketing. In this workshop, we're gonna be discussing how to use your print marketing to sell more tickets to your shows. And Tom has a lot of experience with this. In a minute, he's gonna talk about that experience. But before we do, if you're in the chat right now, if you could just let us know who you are, where you're from, and the types of shows that you produce. Because we really wanna cater this workshop to meet your needs. And also, if you have any questions during this live workshop, please let us know in the chat. I'll be moderating that, and I'll let Tom know those questions as we go through this workshop. Also, we're gonna be going through some slides today. Don't worry about taking screenshots or screen sharing those because those will actually be available to you in the show notes that's right at the bottom of this episode that will go over to the well-attended website of the podcast episode for this uh, topic. So that'll be episode 70, how to sell more tickets with your print marketing. Uh, and then if you just scroll down, you can get these slides that we talk about uh, from this workshop. So Tom, thanks so much for joining us today. To start off, can we just learn a little bit about you and how you use print marketing to sell more tickets to your shows and also what kind of numbers you get from posters, from your printed material versus other types of mediums uh, for advertising? Yeah, well, thank you for joining me on my, my YouTube channel. I've never actually used it for YouTube Live before. This will be a, this will be a first for me and a learning experience. So everyone watching, I say that so you know to expect technical difficulties. Uh, my name is Tom Britton. I'm a theater performer here in Chicago. And while I'm doing this, forgive me as I look off to the side, I'm going to actually share my um, my screen with you guys so you can see some of this stuff. I'm a, a theater performer here in Chicago. I do a one man show called Freak Show and Tell. Uh, it is science meets the freak show. Freak show. If you've seen my YouTube videos, you get the idea. <clears throat> but I'm doing a science show for adults. I, for example, the most popular YouTube video I've got is me. I eat fire. And then since my degree is in applied sciences, I like to explain how these things work. So I explain how fire eating works and I try and make it entertaining and funny and, and you know, uh, do a lot of dick jokes and, and have a good time with it. But at the end of the day, if you're going to understand how fire eating works, you have to understand a little bit of science, not much. So think like if you like Bill Nye, you like TED Talks, but you also kind of like South Park. You kind of like the amazing Jonathan. You kind of like, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I live in Chicago, and the joke I put on the slide here is along with every other show on earth. Uh, what that means is that I had to go to print marketing because while I don't compete traditionally with Hamilton or Book of Mormon or Blue Man Group, they are here. They are in my backyard, which means I do compete with them on bus stop ads, billboards, any of that kind of stuff. They are driving up the price. I can't say, hey, let me get a billboard for 500 bucks a month because in Chicago, well, there's a lot of people here, but also they're bidding against me. They'll say, well, I'll give you 700. And they have a budget of 2.5 million or whatever for advertising. I have a budget of two and a half thousand dollars for advertising. 2.5 thousand sounds fancier that way. As a result, I've got to be nimble. I've got to be a guerrilla a marketer. I've got to be more creative. I also work the tall grass. I'm a touring performer. So I say that just because a lot of you will think that these techniques I use in you know New York and Paris and L.A. and London and Toronto, that works great. But what about Poughkeepsie, Pacoima? What about you know rural Indiana? What about rural Georgia? Well, I come to your neighborhood because I do 200 shows a year. So I am selling, in fact, 20% of my tickets for next month are already sold uh, outside Detroit. I uh, still still born. I forget where I'm performing, but it's a small little city I'd never heard of. I'm working there and I've already sold you know, 20% of my tickets in three days. The tickets went on sale Friday. This is a problem you want to have. I'm right now talking to them because we might sell out and we got to add another day. I'm also a former theater owner and manager and I'm working right now building a new theater. In fact, my partner is mostly in charge of what the theater looks like. It'll be a circus space, a tented show. He has now picked a design. He's had a new baby with our other partner. <laughs> They're partners in more than one way. Um, they just have a newborn. So he finally got around to picking the theater. He got his head above water long enough. That'll be in Door County, Wisconsin. And I throw that in here because a lot of you are saying, well, that's great, but I don't really want to sell tickets like you do and own my own business. 
I want to get theaters to hire me, just pay me a few thousand dollars or 20,000 or whatever. And I show up and do my show. Great. I can tell you what they're looking for, at least in the black box level up to about 300 seats. Uh, for Vegas, for the big shows, I don't know as much, but if you're starting out in theaters, I can help you out a lot. Print marketing matters there as well because, well, now you're competing with me. I also want that job. And I send them posters, postcards, trading cards, programs, brochures, banners, TV ads, radio ads. I have my crap together. And then you send them what? Some business cards and a video on YouTube? It's fine. You may have as good a show as I or better, but the question is, how do I sell your show? Uh, the last thing, the last thing you asked me there, William, was um, specifically numbers. The nice thing about using your software, a little plug for you here, a little paid advertisement, um, <clears throat> which by the way, I'm not for sale. William's here because I use his software and he's a friend of mine and we do a lot of podcasts together. Um, so one of the nice things about using well attended, although I'm sure other software has this feature, uh, is that you can ask them how they found out about the show. And you can require that or give them the option of answering. Uh, 20 to 25 to 30% of my last run, which by the way, the last three weeks were sold out. No one to yep. big theater. I didn't make a million dollars, but whatever. I sold out. That's impressive to me. It's fun for me. Um, so I got what I wanted, full theaters. And 25 to 30% put in their response, saw a poster. Uh, about another 25 to 30% heard it from a friend and the remainder were a mix of like, saw you, I got one radio spot, a really good one though. One radio uh, persona called me back. One producer called me back and then heard from a friend was the other part of that, that 25 to 30, 33%. And so this is really powerful because print marketing works when nothing else does. What I mean is I said that, that none of my TV contacts called me back. None of my radio, except for one called me back. None of my bloggers or podcasts. I, did, I had one other friend who did a, I did a podcast with, uh, Scott here in Chicago. That's it. William and I did a couple of podcasts. Scott and I did. No one else gave a crap. Uh, this time of year is tough for theater. People are covering other stuff, etc. So my posters allowed me, with no help from anyone except for that one producer and a few friends, to fill thirty percent of my theater just off the back of my sweat and sneakers. I could walk around. That's a power. I don't want to rely on, I just finished your episode on TripAdvisor last night. Oh, right. And my buddy here in Chicago got kicked off TripAdvisor and he didn't have this problem, but he said, don't put all your eggs in one marketing basket, basically. Yep. Don't become so reliant on Facebook. Well, I'll tell you, man, I was real spoiled as a theater, ba a theater baby. I'm a, um, what would you call it? A critical darling. All the critics love me. And so I'm used to getting five or six big newspapers and bloggers, et cetera, in the room. And they tell a million people how great I am and all my tickets sell and I've gotten spoiled. And so when it didn't happen this time, I was real glad I like posters because it allowed me to save my own butt. That's now the before we go on here, oh, go uh, we're actually worldwide here. We've got Aiden who's from Sydney, Australia. He's oh. working on a two man mentalist show that's Ooh. inspired by the men that stares at goats. Uh, he also does a bit of magic and some sideshow as well. So welcome, Aiden. Hopefully you can get some use out of this workshop on print marketing. Okay, Tom, let's talk about what we're going to be learning uh, in this workshop. Yeah. Well, good day, Aiden. It's, it's nice to see you. Uh, the, the Men Who Stare at Goats, by the way, is a brilliant film and a, based on a very brilliant and funny book. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, okay. <clears throat> this is the nice, nice thing is that print marketing is an international language because it all starts the same way. It's going to start off with very basic 101 stuff because I did not realize how very little people know about how to do this. Let me stop presenting for a second. And forgive me as this is a little wonky the way they've designed this on YouTube. I can either show you my screen or my smiling face, but not both. The goal today is to produce some materials. This is our goal to get some of this stuff to then use this stuff, hang it up, put dates and times on it, and sell tickets. This is a program, pretend that's a postcard, uh, to, to hang these around town. That's what we're going to do. But a lot of people don't even know where to start. So at first, I'm going to start with just very basic stuff. Find a designer, pick a design, print the thing. For a lot of folks who, who watch this, you may already know, you may have already printed stuff. Stick with me because I'm going to get more advanced. So it starts with very, very simple ideas. Choose a design, find a designer, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the worst voice in the world. There'll be a lot of that and I apologize. Get it printed and then hang it up, which is actually distribution. That's where we can get into some more advanced techniques. 
sell tickets. None of this works if you don't have a frictionless way to get your money into my pocket. And then as a little bonus, I'll talk briefly on what I'll talk about in the third ser series of this, merch table and back of house sales. How to kind of start thinking of your print marketing as also a revenue generating machine. But it starts with a, a real basic idea, and that's find a designer. Uh, if you're following along, don't worry about taking screenshots or even really taking notes because you'll get all this in a download. Uh, the links are in the sh below us on YouTube. You'll find links to the podcasts. And then William has a system where you send him an email and he bounces back these files. Uh, I keep pushing the wrong button. Sorry. Uh, let me go back to presenting because I want to share my screen again. And this is always three clicks. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's start with... This is what it looks like, by the way. Uh, this this is not where we're going to start. This is a bonus. You see up here in the side, it says click here. That's what you'll that's what you'll get. You'll click there. I'll go to a Google Doc, which is this. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet. It's just sheets from Google. This is where I get all this stuff. Now, this is one man's opinion and a little caveat here. Like you look at the 11 by 17 posters, very first line. DocuCopies is where I got them from, DocuCopies.com. A thousand of them cost me 218 bucks. And there's a formula baked in. If you don't want to do that math in your head, that's 22 cents per unit. And then notes, as you can see, like down here, I've added some notes because it's going to vary. And I started making more specific notes as I went along. This has gotten more complicated as I've gone. But you'll also notice like crack and peel stickers from Got Print. This isn't always the cheapest price. Just like when you shop for talent or when someone goes to hire you, they don't pick you because you're the cheapest juggler. Not every time. Sometimes that's the case with posters. I could care less as long as they're on decent paper. Decent, not great. Decent paper. Okay paper. And the colors look good. So I went with DocuCopies because they are the cheapest. But these crack and peel stickers at 23 cents each, you can get those cheaper. But I really like the quality of Got Print, but that's my opinion. So you look through this and you see what you disagree, what you agree with. And you'll get all this, all this, this is all the show notes. You're going to get all this from that link down below on YouTube. And you just click there in the top corner, right by where my mouse is now. And it will take you to the Google Doc. You can make your own copy and start your own spreadsheet and erase the stuff you don't like and add the stuff you love. All right, let's begin. We're getting to the business of this. The first step is you have to choose a design. What I mean is you got to pick a thing to make. You, you got to make something. <clears throat> you can't sit around all day on your hands. The easiest thing to make is either a poster or a postcard. Uh, but there's a lot of other ideas. The top four, count them as the same thing. Uh, the top four are just different sizes of posters. A poster is a poster. So 11 by 17, 12 by 18, even two foot by three foot, that's a poster. A smaller poster in my case is a postcard because I have a very similar design, but I have it made into postcard size. That's for when I walk into your coffee shop, can I hang up a poster and you go, yeah, but I mean, we have the board in the back, but it's kind of full. Do you have anything smaller? Yeah, I have this, you know, eight by nine postcard, a six by nine postcard, a four by five postcard. Uh, my apologies, international viewers. These are in American inches, or as we call them, freedom units. You'll have to convert to the way the rest of the world does it. I'm sorry. In some ways, my country is very, very stupid still, and we use our own system of measurement. Um, but the, you get the idea. They're about the size of your hand, and so you can put a much smaller poster up on the on the board. A banner is one giant poster in my mind. It's just six feet by two feet with a lot less information, but hanging in the lobby of the theater, especially if that theater runs other shows, if it isn't just a for rent space. If I join in on a season, having a banner up in the lobby really helps because you're coming out of Cats. You see my banner. You're coming to Annie next week, and I'm coming to your theater next month. So you might go to my website, watch my video, then bam, I just sold you a ticket right there in the lobby. Drop cards is in quotes because I don't know what to call this. These are tiny little business. They're business cards is what I'm buying because they're cheap, cheap, cheap. 50 bucks American for like 10,000 of them. Really, really inexpensive. And they're just a photo on one side. Who, what, when, where, why, price on the other side. And, and black text on a white background. Nothing fancy on the other side. And I drop them around. So I put them out like flyers, but they're tiny little things. Instead of handing you a business card when I have a show running, I just hand you an, it's a little flyer. Here, put this in your purse. Come see the show. Everything below that is just some ideas for more advanced viewers. If you've already made posters and you're thinking, what? I know how to make a poster, dude. Well, here's some other ideas you might not have thought of. Stuff I might not have thought of. Pro tip before we move on to the next slide. If you have printed stuff before, print bookmarks. Bookmarks are great giveaways. They're fun. If you do colleges, which I do, or library shows, which a lot of my friends in the variety arts do, uh, with the exception of burlesque performers, everyone I know plays libraries. 
uh, ventriloquists, jugglers, mimes, magicians, mind readers, sideshow performers. Bookmarks are the same price. For 75 bucks delivered to my door in Chicago, I can get 1,300 double-sided full color. You'll see them in the bottom. Use my cursor here. These two guys are a double-sided bookmark. There's the two sides. Full color. They look great. They're fine. They're little cardboard. 75 bucks for a four-year supply. I give these things away at tables. I sign them. That's my giveaway. I send them to colleges. And I played one library open to theater last year. The one library I played, I sent them a whole bunch. Start with a poster if you've never made one before. Let's start with an 11 by 17 poster just so we're all on the same page. Now you know what you want to make. You don't want to make these custom trading cards up top. You want to make a poster like we have right here. Can you show us before we move on here just what yep. your drop cards look like? Oh, yeah. Uh, if I have any left, I can. I sort of do. They look exactly like this on one side. So just a picture of, of something, you know, it would be or that, you know, something that's kind of going to attract your attention. Um, and then on the other side would be in the, the glare is really killing it here. I'm sorry. I'll get closer. Maybe it'll focus, but it's just you know, at the pub. Oh, that looks good. This address and, 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 and a price. So it's a very, and that's just a simple flyer for colleges. These are really good because you put 10 or 12 of them on a table where kids are sitting in, on their phones. Um, Anytime I see groups of people, I just kind of quietly put them down and walk away. And then hopefully they see that, they pick it up. Oh, and it's a post they can put in their pocket and walk away. And, and you make that for every show then? Every single, because I mean, 10 bucks, 20 bucks for 10,000 of them, 5,000. It's, it's business cards. They're always on sale, by the way. When you get that sheet from us on Google, you know, um, check everybody. Because if PS Print suddenly is having a 50% sale, don't use Got Print. Go to DocuCopies. They got 30% off. Everyone's always got, deals on business cards and I don't give a crap what kind of paper they're on as long as it's not just garbage, but it can be really cheap. These are not fancy. These aren't my business cards, but it, I almost always have shows going. So I don't have business cards. I have trading cards on me. And then I hand you a full, why not just here's the next show. And yeah, the website's on here. If you want to call me for some reason, but you probably just want to come see my show. You're probably not trying to get my number. Um, if you are, I've been married for a billion years. You're wasting your time. So those are, those are, I call them, I don't know what to call them. Drop cards is what I call them. So I was, you know, like drop bears from Australia, but I was dropping cards. Um, miniature flyers, maybe a, a more appropriate thing to kind of, kind of call them. And then the, the trading cards are exactly that. They're, they're, hang on. So I've got a ton of printed material to my side here. They're just little TCG cards. I like that one the best. It's Magic the Gathering. And it's me and it's, it's got little jokes from the show in it. And then on the back, it's got the logo and I've got two different styles of trading card and I put them in little sleeves. I've got rare, I've got foil. Um, if you're going to do it, do it right is one of my mottos. So those are my trading cards that I've made. I go back to sharing. So of that, you've picked something, right? Let's say an 11 by 17 poster, just so I don't have to keep talking about everything all the time. You've got to start with you. Now, the good news is for those of us um, with a, with a, with a budget, those of us who are in the small time, in the, in the small area, we don't have a lot of money, but we do probably have free time currently, especially if you don't have a show going, right? So the good news is this costs $0 to do. You're going to sit, stare at a blank wall, and think. It's sort of uh, like Zen, but then at the last minute, it's the opposite of Zen. Don't clear your mind. Fill your mind with ideas. You have to start with you. You have to start asking yourself, what do you like? Why do you like it? And then start to see if there are themes. And what you're doing is you're just, I put it at the end here, learn your own taste. You're learning your own taste. Sometimes what you don't like is as important as what you do like. Try and give about a 70-30 ratio. I like 70% of this, and here's 30% of what I have for you to show you what I hate. What you're going to do is this. You're going to start looking at advertising, looking at posters. I held up a poster earlier. You can find it on my website. You drop it in a folder. Maybe you hate my design. Maybe you love my design. You go to William Raider's website. You see a postcard. He's posted there on Instagram or something. You're going to drag that in. Do you hate it? Do you love it? If you feel ambivalent about it, well, then that doesn't help. Leave it out. If you're like, eh, whatever, it's okay. Okay, just skip it. Move on to something else. Find ads you love. Find ads you hate. Find more that you love than you hate. Designers need to know this. The same way from trying to match you up with a, with a woman or with a man. I need to know some basic facts. One, your sexual orientation would be nice. 
uh, your gender would be an important thing, but also like you prefer blondes or brunettes. Are you a leg guy or are you a boob guy? Are you a girl who won't date guys that are shorter than she is? Th this is data I need. It sounds like it's very cursory, but it's the first thing. If you're, you know, a five foot nine woman and I hook you up with a five, eight, five, six dude, he may be awesome. He may be Tom Cruise. But if you just can't get into shorter dudes, well, that's not necessarily your fault. You're not being mean. Same thing with guys. If you like brunettes and I fix you up with this blonde hair, blue eyed bombshell, you're like, I don't know, she's pretty, but I like brunettes. Same thing with advertising. Broad strokes, and then you start narrowing it down. So I like girls that are funny. I prefer women that are as smart or smarter than I am. I really like them smarter than me. That's kind of the kind of stuff you'll need to know. I need a nerdy girl, man. Go get one of those. So now we're really drilling in on your taste. And I use dating as an analogy, and that's going to come up a few times because you are dating your designer the same way you are. If you're Penn, you're dating Teller. That's just the way it is. Like you are in each other's life. Now, unlike Penn and Teller, with a designer, you don't have to be with them for 60 years if you don't like them, but they're in a marriage. Same kind of thing. So let's start with what I did here, which was I started, I just grabbed three Apple ads. There's a lot of advertising I like and a ton that I hate. But here's something I started noticing about myself. I tend to like Apple's design aesthetic. Not just in like the iPod or the iPhone, which wins awards, but in their advertising. And I have for a long time. I was a Windows guy and a, really a Linux nerd for a long time before I ever owned a Mac. And yet I always liked their ads. It, so what they're doing here, what I'm finding is my own taste. What do I like about these ads? I need to look for a theme. Well, I like that they carry a single idea. They aren't married to filling the page and there's negative space, both in they've left you room to breathe, but also they've left you room in the ad. For example, this one on the top right, did, did it say Apple anywhere? There's their logo, but I mean, Apple's a very common name for a company. In fact, they had to settle out of court with Apple, the record company who did the Beatles. You may have heard of them. Well, Steve Jobs was a huge Beatles fan, as was Steve Wozniak. So they named their company after the record company and 30 years later had difficulty because you didn't really do that anymore. And they called, they said, think different, which isn't proper English, by the way, it's think differently. But they decided to think different was better. So they've made a, a grammatical error here as well. And that's it. No website, no phone number, not even what they sell. It says nothing. Think different. They're also defining themselves in contrast. Windows at this time is killing them. In fact, Steve Jobs has to get an investment from Bill Gates, who owns Microsoft, to save his company. Think different because they were the little guy. Same thing happens here. This is the original iMac designed by Johnny Ive. It was very colorful. This little part here that's a bluish color came in, a, and these accents here in blue came in a bunch of different wild colors because, again, every computer box from Gateway or from HP or whoever was around then was this beige, beige Windows box. But it doesn't say any of that. It just says, sorry, no beige. What the hell am I looking at? What is that thing? Is that a weird toaster? A microwave? Doesn't even say computer on it, much less the new iMac or Apple or Mac. They had some cachet with hardcore nerds. They're exploiting none of it. They've left it on the table, which is brave to me. Bold. Scary. No, you know, 5 p.m. Tickets are $15. Get them now online. Nope. Sorry. No beige. Down here, the colors of music. Now they own the world. This is after the iPhone comes out, after the iPod comes out, after the iPod Touch comes out. This is their new version of the Nano that plays video, the first generation that played video with a click wheel on the bottom. They're on their way to being the most popular company, as far as money goes, the most valuable company ever in the history of our planet. Apple's still on target for that, to be the world's first trillion-dollar company. It's a remarkable achievement, and they're starting to see it, and yet still, they are not changing that design aesthetic. The colors of music. Don't even say what it does. I mean, you can get an idea, but you should know what an iPod is. This is my style of advertising. Now, if you're listening to me say this and you're thinking, well, these are terrible ideas. Why not put the price? How much are they? 200 bucks, a dollar, 50 cents? I have no idea. Cool. You disagree. That's important to learn about yourself. You don't like my wife. You don't think she's pretty. You prefer redheads. Cool. Okay. Now we understand each other. We've got our tastes. That will take you a while, but it costs nothing. Advertising's free is the good news. And it's everywhere. To describe it as ubiquitous is to understate it. Figure out what it is you like because you've got to take that to a designer. And I keep pushing that wrong button. There it is. Because now we're going into step two. Once you know what you like, you're now ready to find someone to design for you. This is the hard part if you've never done this before. 
it's imposter syndrome. You feel like you're never ready or never good enough. You're never there. You're never, you're never, I don't want to get a well-attended account yet because I don't have my show. I don't want to talk to theaters yet because I don't have my costumes picked out. I don't want, there's always an excuse not to. What I'm trying to do with this series and in life is remove enough of these barriers where you kind of run out of excuses and it'll give you confidence. So once you know what you like, then when you're sitting at the table with the designer, you want to do this face-to-face -face really as often as you can, especially early on. You can start using other sources and, and having international people design your stuff. But at first, try and get in the room with the person unless you really live out in the boonies and have no other option. I want you to feel entitled to sit at that table, qualified to sit at that table with a designer, with a show, with a set of ideas, and get a poster made and pay that person and feel like you got a good product for your money. So you know what you want. You sit down. You're going to find designers online. There's a lot of ways, and we'll get into that a little bit in a second. But once you've found someone, once you've swiped right a few times, you now go on the coffee date. You sit down, you look at their portfolio. What you need to have on your side of the table is what I'm focusing on. I'm not going to teach someone how to be a designer because I don't know how to do that. That's them. I know how to be a customer of a designer. I need to have a clear goal, an 11 by 17 poster, please. That's a clear goal. It needs to have room, and I'll get to what these giant red bars are in a second. It needs to have room for my show and to change it or whatever. Clear ideas. I'm doing a juggling show where I cover the history of jugglers from 1820 to 1910, the gentleman juggler era of vaudeville. And it's called Gentleman Tom and His Friends. I need to tell them that. A clear idea, not make a poster for my magic show. Make a poster for my burlesque show. They need to have data. And then always put me flexible, but have opinions. That's just my way of saying, be nice. Don't be a jerk to your designer. Keep in mind that they, like you, are an artist. They, like you, are way too sensitive about stuff. They, like you, will cry if you're mean to them. Be nice to everyone, but particularly to artists. Come on, people. So when I say be flexible, but have opinions, what I mean is if I font at the top, learn how to eat fire, yes, for real. I didn't like that font at first. When I first saw it, I thought it looks cool. It looks like Star Trek, but it doesn't really fit my thing. And then I, and I always have this rule with designers. When you bring me the thing, I'm not going to comment then because I want to sit with it because this happened to me. After a while, I started to agree with them, which is not surprising that they were right and I was wrong. I'm real good at eating fire and making jokes about it, but I did not study design. I picked someone who went to school for design. Of course, they're better at me than me at design. That's what they did. So they had this weird font and they decided to use it. And I went, yeah, actually, they're right. I'm wrong. Never mind. So be flexible, but have opinions. Other things I did change. This little red bar I put here for my designers to see. Now, it does not go into the final print. When I showed you that poster earlier, there are no giant red bars. I have labels that are that size, whatever that is, two and a half by uh, 11, um, where I can print them on my printer and stick them to my posters. And that's, that allows me to order 10,000 posters. And when you when I book your theater, the William Rader Theater, I pay you to come in and work in your theater. I can put at the bottom, William Rader Theater, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Tickets on sale now, $35, freakshotel.com. All that goes in that space. So my And you can move that space. If you're the designer, want to put it up top, turn it to the side, put it to the left, put it to the right, put it diagonally. I'm flexible on that, but I need this much room because I already have the labels, already have a system, already have a machine in place. So this is me giving them guides to allow them to do their best job. But more importantly, it's giving them a very clear goal. That's, that's important for your designer. So we've kind of worked backwards. I've covered your side of the table. But how do you get someone on that side of the table? What are you looking for in a, in a designer? Because now the, the dating analogy breaks down. Because now what you're looking for is someone to hook you up with the kind of girl you like. And you're going on a date with that person, this middleman, the designer. The designer is supposed to go back to their apartment and cobble together the woman of your dreams and bring her to you next month. And you go, wow, she's perfect. She's smart. She's gorgeous. She's a good mother. Great job. Ambitious. Yay. Put a ring on it. <clears throat> That's the goal in our analogy. See, it gets very weird. So what you're looking for in a designer, now you're dating the designer. This is, this is your side piece. This is the designer. 
you want to look for a few factors. Number one is, of course, fits your budget. If you're listening to a podcast on YouTube, you probably don't have $2.6 million in an ad buy to go out and have firms come to you and make pitches. <clears throat> so you need to have someone who fits your budget. I say don't keep your budget a secret. That's an opinion. I never felt like I got ripped off by a designer. And if I hadn't told them how much money I had to spend on this project, uh, that they would have worked for less. I feel like when I come to them and say, this is how much I'm working with and here's what I need. Can you do it? And I do that in the initial emails. They know to not even bother returning my email because I really appreciate that when clients do that to me, I get this all the time. Can you do my kid's birthday party? Uh, no, I can't do your damn kid's birthday party. No, not for a billion dollars. Screw you. I don't allow under 18 at my show. I don't like children and don't know what to say to them. There's a reason I've been married to a woman that I've been with for 21 years and we are childless. We don't like them. We've seen them. No. And they ask again and again, but they put it in the email. I can very politely say, oh, it's not really the kind of thing I do, but my friend yada, yada, yada is a really amazing performer for kids' parties. When I get on the phone with them, I go, oh, no, this is this is a terrible. You've really not looked at any of my materials. <laughs> and so now I sound rude. Tell you the budget up front. They need to understand our bizarre business. This is so important. When you first work with a designer, if you can't find someone that William used last month and I used last year or your friends who, you know, in Australia do a, a mind reading show and another friend who does an illusion show and you hire them for a two person show with magic. OK. If that's not possible, excuse me, if it's not possible to find that person, then make sure you really spend some time helping them understand. If you've ever been on a plane with someone and explain what it is you do, you know how hard it is for them to wrap their mind around it. They can't even understand, especially when I do it for a living. They're like, wait, your day job is eat fire. Well, yeah, I play on YouTube live every now and then, but pretty much my day job is eating fire. They need to understand that. That's on you. You got to explain it. Maybe they got to come see the show. But if they don't come to burlesque shows all the time, it's your job to explain. You aren't just a bunch of strippers. They Yes, sexuality is part of what you do. Yes, whipping out your boobs is part of what you do. But it's part of what you do. It is not burlesque. You need to explain all the parts of burlesque to them. When we get into the, the rest of it, it's just a matter of do you love them. It's a gut feeling. It feels good. You look through their portfolio, and not that every piece matches what you do, but you like it. When I flipped through, my, my buddy Nick did the Danger Circus stuff three years ago. The reason I hired Nick is, one, he's a circus performer. It was a kind of a circusy show. But when I looked through his portfolio, he did stuff for, like, heavy metal bands that in no way was the right aesthetic for the show we were doing. It was a vaudeville show. But it looked awesome, man. If I had a heavy metal band, I would have totally used that poster. His wedding invitations. Now, my wife and I didn't do wedding invitations. We have weird ideas on marriage. We did kind of a runaway thing. But if we had done it, if we'd had to, if our parents had pressured us, oh, man, these looked amazing. So his taste is good. It matched my own. So when I sat down with him and explained what it was I was looking for, I felt like he got it. But also I picked him because I kind of knew he was going to get it. I'd seen his work. He knows circus. He's a traditional circus performer. We had worked together before. He's a cool dude. He totally understood it. Bam, I've got a designer. The dating analogy, I think, really holds for that. <clears throat> now we can work together to mostly him, but I can come in every now and then and give a, an opinion or a thought and get these designs. I briefly touched on budget. I know it's an important thing. And I put it here because that first chunk is really for the folks who've never made a poster before. You understand now what you need to do as far as homework or pre-work, sit in a corner and think about what you like. Have opinions, have an attack plan, and come prepared. Unlike a date, you don't just come as yourself with a few of your best stories. It's more like an interview, but more like a radio or TV interview. You need to come with prepared panel pieces that are G-rated. I can't do a lot of my best stories on the radio or TV. They're not G-rated. You need to come with material, right? To the table. You sit down, you work with it. But in the back, you got to think about your budget all the time. Budgets matter. They really, truly do. You can't piss away all your money on your first poster and not have it work. You've got to really watch your cash. I'm sure there are more than two types of budget. Uh, this 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 page is, is very much based on my experience. There are two types of budgets I've worked with. Long shows and short runs. Uh, the difference here is a long show 
is uh, what I held up before. It's my poster and I'm going to put the dates on it. So my show has been running since 2006, Freak Show and Tell. I ordered, I think, 10,000, maybe 5,000 posters. And then I put little labels on them that say William Raider Theater next week. I'm at Trickery here in Chicago next month. I'm at uh, plays a, a dinner theater thing in, in Detroit uh, next month as well, blah, blah, blah. My colleges get a slightly different design poster, but the same idea. So that's one budget because I've got three to five years before I either hate that design and want to change it or change it or throw them in the garbage and start a new show. That's a much higher budget. I could spend a thousand dollars on design and posters because if I'm booking for 3000 bucks each show and I do 25 or 50 or hundred shows in the next three years, that poster is what? 5% of my budget, 2% of my budget. Depends. Well, I said a bunch of numbers there, $3,000 a show for 500 shows. Now the poster doesn't even really matter. It's nothing. Short runs are different. Short runs are for my traditional theater performers and burlesque acts tend to work a lot like traditional theater where you'll announce a show. You've got Valentine's day blues coming up this month. Then you've got spring fever followed by summertime vacation. And, and that's a burlesque show. And so you tend to change your marketing and advertising and refresh it every few months, as opposed to me. I just, I don't change my show. I change my audience. I go to a different area. I travel the world. So your short runs are a completely different budget. And you may have more than one way to skin this cat. If you do tell me the way I've been doing it, the budget for the show is the budget for the designer. I sit down and figure out, this is what my theater needs. This is what I need to pay my people. This is how much I want to make as far as a salary or as far as something at the end for me uh, on a spreadsheet, right? This is how much I've got for costumes. This is what the script is going to cost. You just do all this. It's just traditional theater. It's how much it costs for the rights to My Fair Lady. Here's the costuming. Here's what we can beg, borrow, steal. Here's what we have for a poster as far as printing them, a few hundred bucks for printing posters. And here's how much we have for a designer. And then you go find the designer who can work. And that's why I say don't keep it a secret. Let them know this is how much we have. And this is why the show's only going to make this much money. This is, you know, 5% of our budget is going to you or 20% of our budget is going to you. You'll need to, in short runs, work with people who work in theater, I think, more often than not. Uh, just because you want someone who's also an actor, singer, writer, director doing your design. They'll make it up in volume, though. They are artists, these designers. So it is possible for them to go, oh, well, I love Shakespeare. So I'll give you guys a deal, but don't tell anybody. And then you come back to them when you need more posters done. And when it is time to do that big show, when you do get that big budget, maybe you think of them just like your clients. I'll work and for you for that for this year. But in the future, we need to raise it. I've had that conversation with clients and it's worked great. They have then hired me for big gigs. The next I'm starting with friends. I've done it where I've come and emceed your show for like a hundred bucks and been like, I swear, if you tell anyone, I will murder you in your sleep. And then the next year, Nissan called, and here I am, $5,000 doing the exact same job. And not because I'm worth that much as an MC, because you owed me from the last three times. So you gave a brother a hookup. So just really quickly, if you don't have a big budget, some, one of the things I do is I look at colleges, local colleges in the area and contact those design professors and say, hey, is there anybody that is looking to build a portfolio that might be looking to get course credit for designing and just see if you can contact those students if you have a very low budget because those students are trying to get work, they're trying to build a portfolio and that's real work experience for them to design something that will be used in the real world. And so that's just a, a quick tip. Also, I also really suggest a website, it's called Dribble. I'm putting this in the chat right here. It's just D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E.com. If you're living somewhere where you don't know a lot of people or you're just trying to look for ideas, as Tom mentioned earlier, to try to get an understanding of what you like, Dribble's an awesome site because uh, illustrators, designers, they put up all of their work. And some of these work for major companies like Coke or, uh, Nike, and they'll say, hey, this is what I'm designing right now. What do you guys think? So it's a community and you can go through them and find out, oh, I really like this logo or I really like this illustration. And as you're going through, you can actually contact these people to see if you could hire them for whatever it is that you need designed. Now, a lot of times, like Tom suggested, I go in and I just am very frank. I say, hey, I found you on Dribble. I really like what you're doing. 
how much do you charge for X, Y, Z? And a lot of times they'll just come back and say, oh, this is my price list. This is what I would charge. Every once in a while they'll say, hey, let's talk on the phone. Let's, let's communicate about what kind of budget you have. And that happens occasionally, but normally it's more cut and dry. It's, hey, this is what I need designed. What would you charge for this type of thing? And then they'll let you know. And so it's not a lot of, I think back and forth as a lot of people think trying to figure out you know, how much do you have? How much do I have? Because we're not large, large organizations. We're not large companies. People know like, oh, he's a performer. He probably has X amount of money for this. And so it's pretty cut and dry. So those are just two tips, the colleges and dribble.com uh, for inspiration. Yeah. You had mentioned before when we were talking about having the colleges print your stuff too, if you're doing small runs. Right avoid kinkos avoid staples unless you absolutely can't you want to go online for these printing those particularly those two but there's a lot like them in that small printing market are way more expensive cost per unit look through that google sheet we're sending you find your cost per unit the exception might be mom and pop version of kinkos right you know, sally's printing company they might give you the hookup always think of it like this we're in the arts Use that to your advantage. Being in a band, being a burlesque show, being a magician, a clown, a juggler, a mime, a fire eater is cool. Exploit that. Exploit the cool. When you walk in and say, I'm a mind reader, and you do something with them, and you center tear or something, and they go, why? Their mind is blown. They want to help you. And you've done this, man. I can't tell you the number of theaters or festivals I've said yes to that I wouldn't have said yes to, or I've said yes to a lower budget because they were cool. I wanted to support that. I've certainly emceed shows for money that I would laugh at normally, but my friend was doing a show. They're killer. They're a great act. I'm proud to be part of the lineup and they're my buddy. So if you walked into my print shop and said, Hey, I'm in a death metal band and we're just looking for deals. What could you, you know, match this budget or match this price online. I'm more likely to say yes to you than bank of America or chase. They can go F themselves. But an artist, I absolutely would be like, yeah, let me see what I can do. Or here's what I can, I would tell you, here's what I can do. Here's my, here's my best offer. And I think it goes back to forming partnerships, right? You form partnerships maybe with the design professor and he's sending you kids all the time of, hey, can you work with him? Can you work with him? Or you form a partnership with the local print shop and you say, hey, uh, I'd love if you could give me some type of discount on this and I'll put an ad for you in all of my show programs. So now you're getting, you're helping each other. You're, you're forming this relationship with the businesses around you. And going back to this, this is something we, we mentioned on the last time we did the workshop too. If you're working in a bar, a lot of those bars or restaurants have distributors that will be willing to print your material for free if they can slap their Miller Light or their Coors logo on your posters. And so this is another way if you are doing a gig in one of these types of venues and even some theaters, if they've got a bar, they might have that type of hookup as well, where you can get your material printed for free if they put their logo on that material. But also at the same time, it kind of makes it look like you're sponsored by these companies, uh, which is kind of cool in its, in its own right too. Yeah, I'll tell you, if you uh, are a theater, please do a little bit of legwork. It takes an hour, maybe two hours of your week. In the next month or so, spend four hours doing a little extra work. Find those local hookups. So when I go to play your theater and you send me an email that says, hey, thanks for renting the William Raider Theater. Here's some local press you may not be familiar with. We have relationships with these three of them of the 20 I sent you links to. These three are emails to like Aaron is our buddy at this local newspaper. Jeff is the program director of this radio and they love us. Also, Kevin owns a print shop down the road and he will print you a hundred flyers. Here's what they look like. Here's his logo in the corner. Let me know if you want his cell phone and I'll send him your information. And then performers start asking theaters before I give them money, uh, particularly if you're renting theaters, uh, before you work with these venues, find out because that may be a deciding factor. Some theaters have lost my business and don't know it. Like I was paying you 5,000 bucks a, a week in rent and now I'm paying someone else your money. And they ate your lunch. How? Well, they had Instagram. They had Facebook. They had a mailing list. They worked hard. They had local press contacts. They had hotel hookups. They had print hookups. They were working harder than you, but harder is five or six hours a month harder than you. I know we're all really busy, but six minutes a day, really? You're not that busy. You, you binge watch Netflix lately. Shut up. Next time you're on the toilet, look up local printers, make a note. And when you get off the toilet, go talk to them. I don't have a lot of mercy for people not working hard. Forgive me. Um, it's just never been my thing. I come from a very like work kind of culture. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, now we're getting into step four. So at this point, you have a thing. <laughs> you have something that's landed at your apartment, landed at your office, landed on your front porch. It's a big, heavy-ass box, weighs like seven to ten pounds, it's heavier than it looks because it's full of dead trees. You now need to go redistribute those dead trees or else you've taken life for no reason. Let's talk about distribution. I make a joke here, but when I say, where do you put these things? I typed everywhere in caps six times. So read it like everywhere, everywhere. Every That's it. It's me shouting at you everywhere. And again, I'm going to get a little drill sergeant, sergeant on you. I'm going to get a little tough love, a little hard daddy here for you. I'm not going to let you be a lazy ass. I'm sorry. You, 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 you drop and give me 20, you little bitch. You do not just put piles of postcards in coffee shops. Don't you dare. Don't you dare bust your butt to write a good show. Costuming, makeup, sets, rent a theater, practice, learn a trade, a skill, lose money, relationships, calluses. And now you're going to sneak in and put piles of postcards? No, no, F you. Not happening. You walk in there and you politely take up a little space. Would it be okay if I put a pile of postcards over there with all the other postcards? I ask them even if there's clearly a pile of postcards in the corner and all they're going to do is go, no, yeah, okay, yes, okay, sure, whatever. Doesn't matter. I ask, can I hang a poster in your window? Here's why I say this. I have walked into, at this point, probably a hundred businesses that there is nothing hanging in that room. Nothing. The walls are blank. The windows are empty. Think like a real estate office or something, a law office. And I walk in with the attitude of like, well, time to go get told no. Time to walk in and say, can I hang a poster? And they go, no. But they never say it like that. They always go like, oh, no, I'm sorry. They're so sorry. They never punch you in the face and mace you. They say, oh, I can't. I'm sorry. The boss won't let me. And I hand them a drop card. I go, well, here, you have a computer. The first 10 minutes of me eating fire is online. And I teach you how to eat fire. And that's my little elevator pitch. You go, what? Now you're interested. Not huh? what? Huh? Maybe I sold a ticket. I know for a fact I've done that a few times at hair salons where they go, what? I can't hang up a poster, but I'm coming with my friends and I saw them later. I remembered their face. Um, take up a little space. Learn to be polite but pushy where you kind of go in and go, hey, can I hang up a poster? Because, I mean, 80% of the time they go, uh, yeah, do you need some tape? And I'm the only thing in their window. The only thing in their window on the street in Chicago, by the way, people, there's 4 million of us here. We're walking around all the time. Tons of foot traffic, and I'm the only thing you see is how to eat fire for real, mad science in their window over and over and over again. So I tell you to get good at taking up a little bit of space because the reason I'm using print marketing and not giving you a lecture like next week or tomorrow, rather, tomorrow on social media is because, well, are you the first person to use Instagram? I don't think you are. I think you're the billionth. I think you're the trillionth person to use Facebook, but I'm the only son of a gun in that room over and over and because you're not going you're not asking your band isn't hanging up flyers anymore you're not handing out postcards at the train station which by the way is illegal and no one ever says anything to me no one says anything other than like oh cool what is this like a magic show no sir it's like a science demonstration oh cool all right can i bring my kids no please don't okay cool that's all the cops all the employees of the train station have ever said to me is hey what's this that looks awesome I stand there and hand up posts because we're all not doing it. It's not the 1970s. You got Harry Krishnas and Moonies hanging out in the doorway, annoying people. There's no one else up there doing it. I'm in a suit. I look very polite. Now, there's a lot of privilege involved here. I understand that. Not everyone can do that. I get it. But if you can, leverage it. Exploit it. Do not put piles of postcards in coffee shops. William, you tell that story about you doing the, the parking lot. It's my favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I was first starting out, I was trying to figure out how do I get people to come to my show? And it was, I think, two or three days before, and we had sold maybe half the tickets, and I was really struggling. And I thought, well, I've seen people firing parking lots before. Why don't I go try this? So I printed up little flyers about probably about this size, really as cheap as on the cheapest black and white uh, paper, uh, just cheap as possible. And there was a Hobby Lobby, a Target, a Hastings, which I don't even think is around anymore. Uh, and these were kind of in the general area of this theater that I was working. It was actually an art gallery. And so I printed up tons of these and I begged a few friends to go with me. And we just basically fired an entire Target parking lot just one time. 
fired the entire lot. Uh, we went to Hastings, fired the entire lot. Uh, we go to Hobby Lobby and we're starting to, it was just me at, at this point because it was like, like hours into this. Uh, I'm firing the lot and the manager or one of the, the guys in charge come out and say, hey, you can't do that here. Uh, that's that's not allowed. And I thought, oh, I didn't, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. He didn't punch me or anything. But I came over and I said, oh yeah, I'm doing a magic show. It's just down the road. You should definitely come to this. And he goes, oh, whoa, that's really cool. Uh, sorry you can't put these out, but I'm interested in coming to see this. And so just by making contact and being bold and just firing the parking lot. And as people would come to their cars, I would just hand it to them. Hey, I've got a show coming up. You should come see it. Uh, just by doing that, I was able to sell out the show. And that's just from firing all of those parking lots. Because think about this, people, they just go out to shopping. They're probably with their families. They see something. Now they're thinking, oh, I'm with my family. I'm with my friends right now. Oh, this is something we can all do. And that sold tickets to my shows. Um, after getting kicked out, I think of the Hobby Lobby parking lot, I was like, oh, whoa, I didn't know that. And I got a little bit skittish, but I still did it. And I think that was the only parking lot I probably got kicked out of uh, because you do, you're just in and out. Within 30 minutes, you're in and out and you've, you've got the lot. And then what's cool is the next day, you can go back and do it again because those are all new people shopping there. So you can do it every day and you're hitting 100, 200 people easily within you know, 30, 40 minutes. I mean, it's a hustle every single car, every single windshield, uh, but it, it works. I mean, imagine if you could spend one six hour day and sell out your show next week. That's, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about spending five or six hours of your time, almost a whole work day. Wah. And he sold 150, 200 tickets. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's what I'm talking about. These, these printed materials can be strong. And the thing about like, well, I didn't really know. No one's really doing it anymore. So you're not, it's not like, oh, these guys again. And you get both barrels because you kids have been driving me nuts for weeks. I walk out and go, what are you doing? I'm putting exactly. under windshields. What? Like, like from the 1990s? What are you a grunge band? I don't understand. Well, I'm a performer. It's so novel. It's like we're out there tap dancing. Uh, I'm working with a hotel next month, right? As part of the, the thing, I'm renting their ballroom uh, in every room. In everybody who checks in, get they hand them the little bit of drop card that I'm printing. That five by five postcards what I'm making, but a little small flyer and a banner in the lobby, and that was in the contract. Like if I'm going to give you money, this is what Daddy wants. This is my ask, and they said yes to everything. So oh, they were really excited. They're really excited to have me. So they're bending over backwards. They love it. That's why I'm doing business with them. See theaters. That's why I give you money because you're excited to have me. Uh, they couldn't say yes fast enough. Yeah, put it. That'll look awesome. Like, how big is it? We got like three walls that don't have much. We could take that painting down and put your banner up. So I could put up nine banners, I think, before they care, turn the whole thing into a freak show. Um, but we talk about just getting out there and hustling. People are leaving that space empty. They're sitting on Instagram all day and they're Instagramming and they're hashtagging their butts off. And that works great if you can do it. But now you're up against a, whatever her name is, Jenner. You're up against a Kardashian. You're up against a, 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 the guy from the 70s show. You know, out there in the real world, you're hanging up flyers. Dude, it's me and you. It's me and you, brother. Maybe William will show up. That's it. I will literally, if if there's no room on the coffee shop board, I take down the old posters, but I've also shuffled them around when because I, I didn't want to block yours. I'm not a jerk. Like I move your band poster up. So this goes here. So then I have room for mine there. I don't just put it over yours. I don't do that. That was done in circus a lot. We're nice about it because there's so few people playing in the space. There's no And speaking about that, when I first started distributing my posters, you know, going to all of these places, a lot of them have boards. Like as you walk in, there's boards where you can hang up your posters and stuff. But I would go to some of them and they would be full. It's yeah. like, oh, I can't hang out my poster. What do I do? Well, I quickly learned that if the show is passed, then you can take those off. Like you don't have to ask permission. Hey, can I take these down? If just look on the board, try to find some that have passed, take those down, move them around so everything's visible, and then put yours in there. And I that's what I ended up proof. doing. I would I was doing my shows, you know, every week or every month. And I basically I was the person calling all of these boards because <laughs> I want my posters in those prominent positions. Okay, this one's gone, this one's gone. And I would end up with a stack, you know, of of posters that were from previous people's shows, mainly bands. Um, but I just found quickly that I was probably the one <laughs> like calling all of the, all of the boards within like a, a 20 mile, 25 mile radius. Well, not just, I'm saying I, I leave the board improved. I would take down the old, yeah. ones. I would shuffle them 
So now it looks it looks better. Like the two big posters are next. Me and this rock band are next to each other. The Chinese circus is down here. The few business cards from the people who put, tack them to the wall are in this section. I would walk away and be like, "Yeah, you're welcome." Like, yep. Not out loud. That's a jerk. But I would I would think like, "Boom!" Now it looks yeah. awesome. All it's the funny. The Panera board, board for some reason. Here. What's that? The Panera board was always the one that was like most stuffed. Like Panera, I'd always go in there, and it was just like the most stuffed board that I've ever seen. Yeah. So the, the main takeaway, I want you to understand when I say put them everywhere is that it is not that long walk back from junior high. When you cross the dance floor as a dude, you asked her to dance. She said no. And your entire life ended in that moment. And you walked back over to your friends and felt terrible. It is not that. In fact, nothing's that bad ever again. It's it. You walk in and they feel so bad to tell you no. It, it And they don't often. So when I say put them everywhere, put them everywhere. Let me get back to my presentation because I want to show you these last two points. Um, okay, so the, the now the third one's in a, see how they kind of fade. That's that's on purpose. The text is fading away uh, because they get more opinion. I say give away tickets to service employees. Uh, if you're a VIP, if you're a Hillary Clinton, if you're a Donald Trump, I don't care if you come to my show. You can give two craps. I don't even Barack Obama. Don't care. That's not going to help me. You think it's going to be in the news or hashtagged? Nope. Not really going to make a difference to me. I've had him play. Oprah showed up to my show. Did you hear about that? No, of course you didn't. Because no one gives a damn that Oprah came to my show. Does I was on the Ellen show. No one gave a crap. I, she called me one of her favorite acts. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't sell tickets. Who sells tickets for me? Uber drivers. Cab drivers. People who cut hair. My God, people who cut hair. They're already kind of artsy. I mean, you're sculpting hair, for God's sakes. They have a ton of tattoos and piercings. They have wild colored hair. They dress interesting. They're kind of cool hippies or artsy people, hipsters. Those are my audiences for theater. A lot of times I've gone into hair salons, asked to hang up a poster. They all were, I go when they're not busy. They gathered around for the elevator pitch. And I'm doing my elevator pitch to seven people. If this were a street show, that's going to be 400 people in 10 minutes. I got seven people. Uh, usually in the same demo, usually it's a uh, 30 ish women in one. Then I live next to boys town, which is a very famous gay neighborhood here in Chicago. So I'm adjacent to boys town. I'll walk into some that are mostly males, uh, servicing uh, the, the gay community. So it's a bunch of dudes. Uh, same thing though. Same exact thing. Nothing changes with the gender. Um, and I do my pitch and not only do they, are they thrilled to hang up posters, but there's a lot of give me an extra one because I work as a bartender on weekends. I'll hang one up at my bar. They're trying to help you. And then I swear to you, not this run, but last run I did an entire, the, we should all go. They got together, did a group purchase, 12 tickets and showed up with dates and like, oh, hey, we're the people from right down the street. And they all came and they bought tickets. Now I give away tickets. I didn't know that. I started giving away tickets. I make sure they understand you are the people I comp. So if you want to take it to come see the show, and I also do previews in theater where we do some nights where it's easier to comp than just comping the whole thing. I'll say, you know, before opening weekend, I'm doing a preview on Thursday. If you want a ticket, I'll give you a ticket for that night. Figure out a way to do that and think about who gets free tickets to your show. The guys on morning radio, great. Maybe if it's Howard Stern, okay. But I'm telling you, man, Oprah, you've heard of Oprah. Did me nothing. Did nothing for me. And that's going to happen to you. I'll comp all the Kardashians. <laughs> Nobody cares. Comp me. I talk to everybody. Comp a bartender. They talk to everybody. They'll put more butts in seats. Uh, the last point is a random one when you're printing materials. QR codes were a thing we invented in the 90s, uh, like flannel shirts. And they went away except in certain neighborhoods. Uh, they might be back. The latest version of iOS 11. Nobody knows this, by the way. If you have an iPhone. And it's yeah, I didn't know that pointed at a QR code and it magically the way it should have worked in 1997 just boop, pops up. And so you can put not just your website, you can put a resume, you can put two or three paragraphs of text. So you can have somebody boop the code and go, Hey, look at you, Mr. Technology. Here's a two paragraphs about the show. And here's a coupon code. Cause you know how to use your damn phone. Or even Thanks. a video. You could have a video at the top with, Hey, thanks for checking out my posters. I'd love to see you at the show. Just look below and there's a coupon for being awesome. Like yeah. it's very cool what you can do with these. So so they might be back. Now the fact that iPhones have a, a large share of the market, but it, it on Android you still have to kind of download an app, blah, blah, blah. But they just baked that into the the and I don't use I have an iPod and I have an iPad that I use and I use an Android phone. But if you have an iPhone or any of those iOS devices, iOS eleven, which is the last one that we're on now, the latest and greatest software pointed at a QR code. You won't believe it. Like you won't believe I've showed three or four people now 
and they just they go whoa holy what there it is right at the top a little thing that just tells you hey you've clicked the qr code do you want to do the thing the qr code because it don't want to just take you to a spam site where russian women in your area are looking to meet uh one last point you see this map right here this was last uh september in plymouth michigan and people often will ask me and i know william gets this question too so I talk about, you know, on social media, you're doing marketing. So it's all, you know, the show is awesome and I'm so great. And look how wonderful I am. And the show is sold out, sold out, sold out. You know, you're always marketing and image managing and branding, uh, which is just bragging and, and feeling terrible. Don't think I don't feel awful every time I talk, I type sold out. I feel like I'm just being a nudge. I'm just being a douche. I'm just being a jerk and bigging myself up. I really understand. And people will come and ask me. They'll say, how are you? So you're nobody is that they don't say that, but that that's the thing. I don't have a TV show. I'm not in Vegas. I'm not 30 years doing it. I'm not, I'm nobody. How am I selling 120 tickets at 35 bucks a head, seemingly effortlessly over and over and over again in any neighborhood in America? I seem to be able to, well, not complain about being poor. I'm either sold out or I got pictures of nice full houses. How the hell does a nobody with no budget do that? And unfortunately, Unfortunately, that's your answer right there, buddy. Hard work. I know it sucks. You didn't get into the arts to work hard, did you? This is me up here starting, and this is me and a buddy of mine, but he's really just there for moral support. As we walk all over damn Plymouth, and you see me backtracking right here a few times. These shops were in the restaurant area. A lot of them closed at five, and the restaurants opened at four. So I walked past, made a mental note, had to walk back, walk back, walk past, walk back, walk past, walk back. That's it. This is me dipping into shops along the way, et cetera. I'm drawing giant diagrams on the city of Plymouth. I hit every shop. I talked to every person. I typed every email. I sent every press release. I did everything I was supposed to do. And this show didn't sell out, but I had 300 seats. So I was thrilled with the 200 and something people who showed up to two different shows at 8 and a 10 p.m or seven and nine, something like that. But I had four or 500 people total for the night in Plymouth, Michigan, come to a nobody show and pay, I think 15 to 20 bucks to walk in the door. 17 year old me would not believe that that was possible. That is a dream I dared not have. And I just wore out my sneakers. That's it. I was tired. I'm old now. I'm 45. I was 44 then. Oh, I was ever so young. I was tired, man. It sucked. But I did not just want to eat. I wanted to succeed. I wanted that success. So when you get these posters, realize it's just step one. And you can hire someone to do it. A 17-year-old kid, I could have hired him on Fiverr to do this for me, no problem. But they're not as good as I am. So I took a train over there. I don't own a car. I rent a car to go. It's cheaper to take the Amtrak to Plymouth, jump off the train, spend a day doing it, come back home. Spent 200 bucks and a ton of my money, a ton of my time. And my Since we're talking about work. distribution, how far in advance are you going to hang these posters before your show starts? It varies depending on the market. You got to kind of test market to market, unfortunately. So there's no simple answer. I will tell you that in my hometown, so now the uh, last show I did was at Trickery, which is 0.7 miles according to Google door to door, right? So six weeks out and then five weeks and then again at three weeks because I go back to check because people will take them out of the window, not realizing that the show ran for a month. Um, and then other people will see it in the window. So there were places I went in. Um, so I walked like two miles down the road. So I went past the venue and then kept going. So I'm doing like a radius, right? But there's major streets. There's no point going down some of these roads. There's just apartments. So I went down about, a, say, two miles, then came back home because I was tired that day. The next day I went out and I started at mile two. And the next shop I asked was like, I was wondering if you were coming in here. I was on the way to work from the train. I saw your poster in every damn window. I was thinking, why didn't he come in here? What, did we not look friendly? Like one person made that joke. Kind of, I was wondering if you were going to get to me. And, and she was a lady that actually comped her a ticket because she was super sweet. She ran an art gallery. Um, but so I thought other people think that too. Like, what is this show that's suddenly all in my area as I walk from my car to my business that I go to, oh my God, 20 hours a day if you own a small business, right? That. So, But also, this is interesting because you said that like the business owners know that you're there. And I think that's a, a vital point here because you're not only just sticking them in the window, you're making contact with the people and they now know, these business owners now know who you are 
on that you have a show going on. I think that's really what's important. And also tied to the venue. So this is a, a it's a neighborhood. It's what was referred to as a gayberhood back in the day. So it was a gay neighborhood. And for safety, uh, because you'll get beat up just for your sexual preference once upon a time, uh, you had to live in this neighborhood to feel safe. So that neighborhood still has a very tight uh, feeling to it. But this happens in black neighborhoods, Jewish neighborhoods, Puerto Rican neighborhoods. You have neighborhoods that had to, for their own safety, band together, right? So when Aaron, who's the guy who owns Trickery, opened the venue, the neighborhood got excited. They still have that sort of what's going on, a new Froyo place. Well, that's we should support our brothers and sisters in this hood, in our area. Neighbor, Chicago is also a very neighborhood centric city. But people get excited. If you open a new art gallery in the art district of Denver, I'm sure the other art galleries are very nice. They go by and go, hey, just saying, my name's Tom. I just own the place down the street. I just want to say hi. So when I came in with a poster, they were like, I've been meaning to go see a show there. I saw it open like in July. Welcome to the neighborhood. They thought I owned the place. I explained I didn't. I was doing a show. And they came. So that happened also. So yeah, I'd say do it six weeks out if you're local. And then check back in. Don't get lazy. Check back in, especially week of show, because you know you did a big study on this. Uh, when people buy tickets, the majority yep. of my audience buys tickets four or five days out, and those big groups of 15, 10, 20 people, you're trying to organize your friends, and it's a pain in the butt. You're texting, you got a group chat going on. It's like herding cats, right? Then finally, day of show, you go, dude, how many tickets am I ordering? Who's actually coming to this thing? 12 people respond yes, and you buy 12 tickets. So those big orders, or you'll see like nine names pop in all at once. They finally got their crap together through their Facebook Messenger, and now the tickets are coming in. You need to keep hitting that gas because those big, I mean, I've had shows that had 40 tickets available, and then 12 sold, 8 sold, 10 sold, 2 sold. I'm like, oh, sold out. Sorry, guys. That was it. And it was five people basically putting together groups. So you know, something I forgot about, I do not like – window washers that's the one thing i do not like like i'll have been i've hung up like on a whole street all of my posters and then a week later i go back and they're all gone and i go into the business I'm like what happened oh we had our windows washed yeah so now i've got to go back and put them all up again uh, because it's the same person like with every business on the strip that he just goes to every single one and now my posters are gone so it is good to check back just to make sure they are there yeah, you also check in because you earn cachet. Uh, so week three, um, I would go back in. I'm, I'm thinking specifically, these are one story that I assume if one person complains, seven people were thinking it. If one person says a compliment, eight people were thinking it, right? Uh, dry cleaner. I go in and he goes, hey, man, how you doing? How's the fire eating thing going? He goes, good. He goes, man, I had two friends go. They really loved it. The wife and I are trying to come this weekend. If not, we're definitely coming to closing, closing night. Now that guy wants drop cards next to his cash register instead of, he goes, and I go, well, can I put some, po yeah, put whatever you want. Now all of a sudden I'm approved by his, I'm not just a jackass doing some card tricks or something. I'm good at my job. And now I've been stamped with that. Like, man, they said it was really mind blowing. You were funny. It was smart. It had a story to it. You weren't just doing crazy stuff. They couldn't talk enough about it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Please put those here. And so, so yeah, you earn cash if you have a, a good show. Review time. This is what I want you to take away from the first part. This is what I need you to understand now. And if you don't, you message me and I will add the part you don't understand into this or go over it more. You now know the steps to printing an 11 by 17 poster, hanging it up, and then it sells tickets. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. You've spent a lot of time figuring out your taste. So you're ready to talk to a designer, but also so it gets that uh, imposter syndrome out of the way. I have the right to sit at this table and explain to this person what I like about fonts, what I don't like, colors I like, advertising, et cetera. You've decided on, and that takes forever. Take your time doing that. Then decide, okay, I'm going to do 11 by 17 is a big poster, maybe eight by 10, but you've looked online, you've got ideas. You didn't go in and say, I need a poster. You had opinions, double-sided, full color, black and white, this side. Your designer may talk you into some of the things. Hey, you know, if you do 11 by 17, I've got a guy who will save you 20%. Oh, interesting. Okay, so let's do that then. But you, are, you have an idea of what you want to do. You know your budget. And then in my opinion, you don't keep it a secret. But that's a scary thing, so fine. You have to know your budget. Maybe you keep it a secret. Maybe you don't. Take that with a grain of salt. But know your budget. Now you're ready to interview designers. I know how much money I got. 
I know what I like and I know what I need. Oh boy, the designers gonna be thrilled with you. Most designers are like our clients; they have no frigging clue what they're after. Uh, I don't know. Can it, maybe you could stand over there and do your show? Or I don't. I didn't really think about it at all ever. Interview designers, you are prepared. Find someone you like. You like their work. You like their personality. Sometimes I see people who have amazing work, but they're jerks. Just like in real life. I don't want to work with them. I like them. I feel like you can do the best thing. You make my show look awesome. I now work with you to get what I love. It's not a fight. It's a partnership. We're working together to get the best poster that represents my show. But also, it ain't art. It sells tickets. It's, it's designed to sell tickets. Then it's your job. You get a big old box of them on your porch. You now have some ideas and some real practical do this. Don't sneak in. Don't sneak out. You're not a ninja. That's not your brand. Go in and ask to hang up posters. Make contacts. High five. Kiss babies. We are on stage. Even if you're the bass player in a metal band, you're on stage because you got a little charisma, because you're charming, and because you're an artist. Leverage those. If you're kind of a boring dude and kind of scary looking, you're a talented bass player in a death metal band, cool. Go in there in full makeup. Take pictures with people. Be a rock star. That's fine. Be yourself. Be who you are on stage also. Hang up your printed materials. Distribute them. These do no good if you are just sitting on them. They got to get out there. Bonus time. So this is a preview of uh, episode three, which will be Wednesday. So what we're doing tomorrow I'm going to teach you how to, let me stop sharing my screen real quick. I'm going to teach you how to take this printed design that I just covered in great detail about how to make. This is great for online. This is garbage. Why? Well, this, this works on Instagram. It's the wrong shape, but it's okay. You can read the text mostly. This, I mean, can you even tell there's writing at the top of my camera? No. You, you can't. There he is. I don't know how to really. There you go. See? There we go. Okay. It's trying to focus on my face. Uh, okay. So th you can't read this on Instagram, even if I made it into squares. So this needs to be completely redesigned or scrapped and just this in a square format from my designer. That's what has to happen. That's episode two, how to not screw this up, to know what to put online and how and where, and to have that in mind when you go to the meeting with the designer. So, you know, right away, you need two SKUs, two versions, and that can be part of the money they charge you because it does take a little bit more work. But if you've got it in mind right away, it's only a little bit more work, which means they, they charge you for their time and their expertise. But their time is the distillation of that, right? I can go into a designer and say, here's the thing I need for the poster. And here's what I think we would do to use it online. And my designers tend to go, yeah, yeah I'll do the other one. No big deal. They'll, they'll throw it in or it's 50 bucks. It's 20 bucks. It's, it's another hour of their time. They charge you $75 for that hour and you've got now an online version and a poster version for not even a hundred bucks more. I use a little more sp expensive designers. Don't get intimidated by these numbers. You can find people who do it for free, for trade, for cheap. The third one is now I want to take this like this, leave off the date and time, packages it, package it up in say a swag bag with a, th this is, this is $10. Uh, there's, well, I pulled some of the posters, some of these posters. It's four posters that are in here, two full color, two black and white. There'll be another one on this side. And then all this stuff. I sell these for $10 and I use them to um, do VIP tickets, which is the bonus for act three on Wednesday. When we talk about back of the house sales, but I am going to give you in advance the swag bag breakdown. So that is all of this stuff, including the bag. Uh, the Amazon clear bag, 13, seven sixteenths by 19, one and quarter freedom units, crystal clear, protected polypropylene storage bag. I only say that prop, 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 polypropylene. Uh, these cost 26 cents each for this bag. It's a nice bag. Uh, resellable. It's where I got it. Same thing. Google sheets so that you can tear it apart, make your own. And you'll just, when you get the, um, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see my screen. Let me share my screen. I messed this up. I forgot it wasn't sharing screen. That's what I'm talking about. So you're going to get one of these. And then right here, you'll click there. And there's your, that's your swag bag. But see here at the very top, the Amazon clear, that's the bag I was holding up. This is everything that's in it. And then everything below this line is in the bag. Everything below this line is individual or I'm thinking about it. And then what I do is say, I want to put a bottle opener in my swag bag. I grab this and drag it up above this line and it goes into these numbers. And it would say, okay, it's $1.35 more. If you sell it for $10, it's going to cut your profit down to whatever that would be, uh, $6.40 something cents. VIP bag is everything above this line. 
And so it lets you play with it. So you can drag stuff in and out. Say, what if I put a three pack of buttons in? Ooh, that's, I'm not making any money now. What if I threw in a sticker? Oh, that's okay. Now I'm making $7 and 50 cents and they have a sticker also. I can play, 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 play forever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, so before this, we wrap this up, Tom, we do have another question here yeah. uh, about the posters. So when you said that you leave off the time and date on the posters that you order, is that something that you add with the future confirmed dates? And then if you've already printed them all, how do you go back and add those dates? Okay, there's a couple of ways to skin that cat. So one that I do, so these are the ones I send to colleges, right? So there's a big blank space here in the design. There's kind of just negative space in general, but I also had the designer leave like some real. So then you're only going to use what? 10, 20 of these uh, at a small college, right? So you would just write them. You just have students write them 10 or 20 times. You can use either side to double sided. So you can change the poster on the wall if you want or different posters to attract. I just thought it wasn't much more to print double sided. That's just me uh, being fancy. But you just write William Rader Theater. So you can just write it by hand. But then also I found these, um, I don't have any with me, these two by six labels that I can just put into a printer. So find the labels first in a source that isn't going to go out of business, something like Avery, um, print them. And so then I would just have, so this space down here is nice. And see, I could put that two by six right there, like that red, like that red line was before. Same thing on this side, there's that red line. So my designer knows that, you know, this is an important element. So don't put it here because that's not as good as that. And then I just print them and stick them here. And that's when I'm doing 20 or 30, because one, I have terrible handwriting, but also I can't imagine that would just suck, you know, but, but an 18 year old college student, there's five of them could split it between them. Each of them does four. They have 50 posters or 30 something posters to hang out. The other thing is like when I did trickery, I did a short run. I spent a hundred bucks and I got 110 posters and it just was this design. And then I just, you know, in Photoshop on a layer had trickery added here, date, time printed on the poster. So I printed 5,000 of these and 150 that have the branding for trickery on it. And then I distributed them slash threw them in the swag bag. So you got one poster that was no advertising stuff on it. Another poster just like this that said trickery here. And um, I think it was up here. I forget on the poster, but trickery on the other side as well. Um, and he's got that as a little extra. So you got five posters instead of four. So, so just to clarify here, uh -huh. if you are then doing like a show at the trickery and it's going to be over, let's say three or four week time, you'll go ahead and print out the posters with the date, time, location and everything. You'll print up like 250 of those with the dates and times and everything for those. But if you're going out and doing a college show or maybe a show somewhere else where it's a one-off, then you're going to use those 5,000 or 10,000 that you printed and just print some labels for that and slap them on. Well, the, but the metric, yes, mostly the metric though, isn't the length of the run. It was my budget. So for people who are printing their first, I would say print these and just do the legwork because you have more time than money, right? So this is more, is less valuable to you than this, right? You can sit and write them. I had confidence that I would make X dollars off of trickery. So spending a couple hundred bucks wasn't a problem. But if someone called me and said, hey, I got a brand new coffee shop. It's got a back room downstairs. We'll give you the room. You've got your own door, but no one's really coming in. Then I might just take these and make, you know, 50 of them myself cobbled together. Because am I going to make money? I don't know. So it was a matter of projection. So when I sat down and did my, my budget, I projected based on I'd done the crowd theater, which I'm 0.7 miles from trickery. Crowd theater is 25 freedom units of feet away from me right now. I'm eight meters from that theater. So it's in the neighborhood and I had numbers from it that I tracked. So the metric is budget. So if you're really, really new to this and posters scare you, I would just print the generic blankish ones that are also good for merch. You can put these in the back of the room. We'll learn on Thursday. It's part three. And then I would just do the raw grunt work at first of wear out your wrist. Oh my God, I hate this so much. This sucks. My fingers are cramping. I'm never doing this again. This was a terrible idea. I'm going to spend 200 bucks. That's how I got there was you learn that because you're going to have, I have, I still have more time than money. Like I still, I'm very good at managing my time. And so I still sometimes would rather do it myself than pay someone else to do it. Depending on, I just am not qualified to do some of this, or I would love to build my own computers. I just can't really do that. So we have another question here, and I think this is a great question. If you're new to doing your shows and you don't have quotes from critics yet, what else can you put on your poster to boost yourself up? 
Ooh, that's a that's a big one. Okay, so let me figure this out with me, William. So, okay, if you don't have quotes on your poster, well, a description of your show. So I've done the Apple thing. This is my opinion, right? It, what does this tell you? This doesn't tell you crap. But you see, like, it's it's think different. This is my aesthetic. So anyone else would have, like, filled something in here with, like, a unique history show that blends science and science fiction into one amazing fact-filled journey. And it's amazing. You write, you big up yourself. You write your own quote, basically. You just kind of big up yourself in, like, a paragraph. Or you have your designer, you have that paragraph and say, I really need these 75 words. And then as a designer, I knew, because this would look terrible right here, but the designer could definitely figure out to make me smaller or use this space differently, right? And then I happen to be a critical darling. So you saw a bunch of these quotes. These came later. Believe you me, I had a show with a poster before I had any quotes at all. So you could do a different design and just describe your show. Or if you really like this idea, if you can get an iconic enough branding, if you could do something like, what's that guy who sees all? Alexander sees all. What a great poster. And that's it. Alexander, if you haven't seen this guy with a turban, he's doing the, the, the mind reading. Or I think he's just staring at you. Turban, it says the great Alexander sees all, knows all. That's it, man. No date, no time, no nothing. Maybe you find something like that you can do and you don't put text. I mean, this is, a, this is my favorite. I like this side better than this side personally. I like this side. I think this side is better for sales because it's learn to eat fire and catches your attention. But I prefer this. This is my thing. Very little information. Figure it out. There's a website. Look, I gave you some. I gave you more than Apple did. I gave you a damn website. And on the website's a video and pictures. Um, so yeah, I also I'll tell you if you're doing anything like a theater show, once you hang up posters, bloggers start to come, people start to come. You can get Yelp reviews, TripAdvisor reviews. What's the other one? Four Square Facebook reviews. I put Facebook reviews on all my, uh, you'll see it on my website. If you go to like buy tickets, the very bottom are Facebook reviews on a scrolling, like a uh, slideshow. Um, you can get reviews. It doesn't have to be the press. In fact, a lot of times it's more valuable if it isn't the press. Cause you assume you know, how many times have you seen like Paul Blart mall cop seven, a romp for the whole family. Some guy I've never heard of Cincinnati. I'm a little suspicious of reviews not being corrupted. You know, the fact that so-and-so from the New York times says the new Apple watch is amazing but doesn't he hang out with those dudes? Aren't they buddy, buddy at the golf course? Like politicians and businessmen are. I'm suspicious. But if my friend says, Oh my God, the Apple watch changed my show. You got to get one. Now I'm thinking maybe 800 bucks doesn't sound so expensive for a watch. Does, does and the other happen? thing is if you happen to have corporate clients, you can put those corporate clients as well on your poster. So it would be Tom Britton is awesome. Apple. Right. And so it doesn't have to be necessarily for your specific show, but if you've got, if you've ever done a show for a corporation, you can use those quotes too to just start off and then you can transfer over to more specific quotes from your show. Uh, and then just going back to testimonials, after every show that you do, get testimonial videos because then you can translate those videos into written and put those up on your website, use those for your show posters. Uh, and so that you'll have something to, to start off with. But this is, I guess, and I think you would probably agree with this. This is like a living document. If you get a better quote, you're going to take out your old quote and you're going to put in the new one. And so you need to be able to change this and talk to your designer about this. But you need to be able to change this because you're going to be updating this with new and, and better quotes as you get them. Yeah, it definitely a living document. And the nice thing about doing public shows, there's two things I love about doing public shows that if you're not doing public shows, here's my big pitch for why you should hang up posters and sell a ticket. Why not just get Nissan to hire you? That's great. You make a lot of money. I understand. Why not just get a school to hire you or a library or a college in my case? Yes. But the nice thing about doing public shows is two things. One, I get critics who come to my show and when they are positive reviews, which I've been lucky when they're positive reviews, it gives me real confidence because it's one thing for me to think I have a new show, a good show. But when a critic five years ago slammed the new Cirque du Soleil and said, you cannot go see this $7 million catastrophe when I have a $7,000 show called Freak Show and Tell that is amazing. She recommended you skip Cirque du Soleil and come see my little nothing show. That made my day. When you have people in the room, and I, I, don't, I don't know anyone who bought tickets for next month. I don't know any of those names. A room full of strangers saw my ad, will see my show, and then will respond to it. It gives you a confidence that you just don't get if you're performing in a vacuum. If you just show up and do the show and leave and one person in the room is happy, the person who booked you, that you'll know because they'll book you next year. And that's important. But when everyone in the room leaves happy with the money they've spent, changes your life. I swear it does. Gives you confidence you don't have. Normally, that's, there's a reason we're on stage begging strangers to love us. And it ain't because we're confident. Number two, 
Don't worry about press quotes, man. The radio, they want to get in. They want to be in the game that is you. They need that content. The newspapers find me. The TV finds me. Bloggers find me. Magazines find me. I'm visual. Me on the cover eating fire. I am the photo for every time I get pick of the week. It ain't the dude from Smashing Pumpkins doing his reunion tour. It's the fight. It's just a dude with a guitar, right? It's the fire eater. It's the sword swallower. It's the glass walker. It's the electricity throwing mad scientist in a lab coat making that face I make. That's what gets in the newspaper. So start doing public shows and you'll immediately have press quotes. You'll immediately have quotes on Facebook and ask for reviews. Go right now, make a Facebook page and ask your friends to review your show. You'll get 10 or 20 right there. Just you guys have seen me perform. Could you do this? And I'm going to put them on a poster. So a quick comment here from Michael. He says, Tom, let us know when you're coming to the East Coast, Maryland, so we can see your show. You might also be able to do a lecture at Denny and Lee Magic Studio in Baltimore. That'd be cool. I don't get that close to Baltimore. I'll tell you what, get on my mailing list. Um, I don't spam you. It's always just tour dates because I'm coming all around there. Uh, this next tour, if you're in, so you need to be on my mailing list. And I say mailing list because Facebook doesn't always show you the stuff. Twitter might do okay too. Uh, but I really only mail tour tour dates. And then if I have like uh, discount tickets, like you don't get, I don't uh, blog with my email list. Like here's what I did this week. I, I only do shows. I don't have a life. <laughs> my dog and I went for a walk and you're going to make for a compelling content. Um, South Carolina, West Virginia, Illinois, Michigan, and a bunch in Pennsylvania. If you're in those states, get on my mailing list right now because in a week I'm coming through Pennsylvania, South Carolina, West Virginia on this part of the, the college tour. And a lot of these shows at the colleges in particular, uh, if you're allowed in, not every college show is open to the public. It's sometimes it's 70% students only, right? You can't come in. But those 30%, when you can come in, they're free 90% of that time, right? Free to get in. They just don't have a method. They're like, how, we, how we charge for tickets? I don't know. So you get in. Or I've had a couple, I mean, a couple of colleges open to the public, free for students, three or $5 for non students. My $35 show is five bucks when it goes on the road or free. And then if you're a student at these colleges uh, or sometimes an alumni, you can come to the show and those are, I've never had them charge students. I think that was a thing back in the day, $2 to come to a show or whatever. I haven't seen that in the last 10 years. Uh, so yeah, Maryland is not yet there, but um, if you know, Brian Rudo, go see his show. He also does a danger comedy show with it. He has an element of magic that I don't, I, I don't do any magic tricks. Brian does. Brian's a very good magician and escape artist, juggler and physical comedian. And I think he's out of Baltimore. Before we wrap this up, Tom, can you just show us really quickly, do a screen share of how we can get on your mailing list? Just like take us through that step oh, yeah, uh, yeah. so we know where to go on your on your website. And then can you go ahead and hop over to the well-attended blog as well, just so that people can see where they can download the slides uh, from this episode? Yeah, and that's a uh, slash podcast is the uh, the blog you're talking about? Uh, slash blog, wellattended.com oh, forward slash okay. blog. Hang on one second. Typing that in now, slash blog. So let me start with, uh, boom, boom, it's always three clicks. Sorry. This is a uh, YouTube uses hangouts for its sharing. And it's a weird little kludgy thing. So this is the page you'll see. I've defaulted to just the tickets page that you're probably buying. And then if you just go to contact, uh, you can't miss it right there. Join the old mailing list. And then all the social media. If you don't, if you really just hate email lists, here's all the others. I mean, I got Vimeo for God's sakes. I'm pretty thorough. Uh, I actually have Pinterest I need to add. I have a Pinterest. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just putting things on that are there. Uh, but that's, that's it. Get on the mailing list. And then all you're going to get is essentially on, uh, on these tour dates that'll pop up here. You'll get like, in a, in a this is a starting March 21st, I don't know, March 15th or so you'll get like an email that says, Hey, here's where I am this week. And then the same thing will happen in April. And that's really about all I'm interested in sending you because i'm assuming you don't want pictures of the chicken sandwich i had for lunch that's what instagram is for and then uh the page i'm looking for is not available what well attended.com forward slash blog yeah what did i type oh who knows i have no clue there we go okay so episode 70 right there on the left yep so if you're watching this in real time there's only been one, which also is very good, by the way, about TripAdvisor. I just listened to that last night with Joe Diamond. And then the last three are me, and they go reverse order. So 70, uh, you'll click it. And then right here, you put your email in, and it, it automatically just happens. Like as soon as I typed my email, if I hit get the resources, 
boom, you have an email, you click it. And that's those, uh, those, uh, slides out. So the slides I was showing you, and then within the slides, you're also going to get the, uh, hang on, let me, there we go. Uh, the Google links are cont contained in the slides. So just the very top is the one and the very bottom is the other. And then there's a link to well attended by the way, because, uh, if you're going to use ticketing software, um, there's a lot out there. I, I really strongly, not just cause William's here, uh, well attended, but I will tell you, you can't use brown paper tickets and William can't say this, but I can it. They're, I'm sure they're fine with like, they give you your money. They get a ticket. That website is garbage. It's from 2003 and it's branded terror. It looks like their website and you're stuck in there and you're in their little website with a bunch of other ticketing software, go somewhere else first and then try well attended later, but get off of that. Good God. It's not, it's just nasty. It offends me. Um, you can make well attended look like it fits my website. You can skin it. You can upload your own photos. And they're not this big and bam, 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 Oh my God. Look at us. We sell tickets. It, they, it's subdued. You'll get the idea that you're on well attended and not on my main site, but click like you're going to buy a ticket, go to my website, right? There's the front page, click buy a ticket. Now it kicks you to well attended, but you don't feel like you've been kicked to Mars. You feel like you've been kicked to another page of my website basically. And you can purchase a ticket easily. That's what I complain about. And there's, I'm picking on brown paper tickets, not just them, but there's a category of ticket sellers that are just terrible at their job and charge you too much money. I found out from Trickery, the software they're using, it charges them like a ton of cash. Um, I don't know. That, that's a basic, like a, a pitch for make an account. William will walk you through how to set it up. If you have tech problems, you just message him on Facebook. You text the guy like he's, he's not a big corporation. You, you find him. If you're in Denver, go knock on his door, see what happens. Go wake him up. He goes swimming every morning. Find him at the Y. <laughs> Find me at the rec center. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but I think that really wraps it up. If we don't have any other questions, I want to thank you guys for watching this live. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. That's 2 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, back on YouTube. And hopefully Tom will put a link uh, to the next episode right in the show notes here in a few minutes so that you can click on that and go right to tomorrow's uh, YouTube video. And if not, just go on Facebook. You can just search for the event, uh, Print Marketing Masterclass, and you can find that link there as well. Yeah, I'll put the link in the show notes. I'll also pin it as the top comment from me so that you can very easily figure out, oh, here's part two, so you don't have to stop. So yeah, I think that wraps it up. Thanks so much, Tom, um, for joining us today, for letting us do this on your channel. I know I've learned a ton from this series, and hopefully everybody watching out there has also learned a lot and really... Uh, get inspired to go out and do some print marketing. Yeah, that's the main thing, man. Get out there, hang up some paper, and turn it into pieces of paper you put in your pocket. Thank you guys so much for watching, man. You guys have a good day, and hopefully I'll see some of you tomorrow. We're doing social media tomorrow, where the half the money from the movie's made. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>